You may need to explore transformations on your variables when building a regression model. Transforming a one or both of y's and x's, the predictors may improve the fit and correct for any violation of statistical assumptions behind the model. The assumptions on the error term include homogeneity. If it doesn't hold, we say we have a problem of heteroscedasticity. Errors are normally distributed. For standard linear regression analysis, hypothesis tests and confidence intervals of the parameters and predictions are derived assuming the errors are normally distributed. In practice, we can accept if the errors for a model are slightly skewed. There is more than one strategy to try should one or both these conditions not hold for a fitted model. In this presentation, we'll look at the popular box Cox transformation, referred hereafter as BC, which is proposed as a way to deal with one or both of these problems. The transformation may make a skewed distribution more symmetric and alleviate heteroscedasticity. It may also help strengthen out a model where the relationship between y and x is non-linear. BC works on the y variable and here it is. Notice the following. The idea is to find a suitable power denoted by lambda on y. The transformation is not y to the power lambda as there would be a problem if lambda were zero as then all the transformed y's would be ones. Lambda is unknown and may be estimated by maximum likelihood which turns out to be the same as minimizing the residual sum of squares. The g is the geometric mean of y and it's omitted in some presentations. Inclusion of g gives us a rescale version of the transform and this allows comparisons of the RSS from models using different lambda. We're after the lambda that minimizes RSS or equivalently one that maximizes the likelihood function. Notice bc works for non-negative values of y and we'll discuss in the Q&As what to do if you have negative or zero y's. Now here's the thing to seeing how this works. Though the y's are not normally distributed, the power transformed y's are assumed to be distributed normally with constant variance. And we set up the likelihood function under these conditions. The usual large sample property of MLEs will apply to the inferences such as confidence intervals for lambda. Lambda can be any number, though in practice we entertain values that are on the ladder of powers. Selecting one of these powers makes the job of explaining the relationship between y and x is easier. Using bc like this as a guide to selecting lambda is the way Boxcox recommended. If you get an estimate of lambda say 0.52, you would select the square root transform as it's the closest one on the ladder. The difference in 0.52 and 0.5 means the difference in the output is small enough not to worry about. Why might taking a power on y work? I mean, why not use some other transformation and pretend it could normalize the errors? Well, for a right skewed distribution, a lambda less than one would pull in a stretched out upper tail and stretch out a bunched lower tail and so make the distribution of y more symmetric. Similarly, a lambda bigger than 1 will make a left skewed distribution more symmetric by pulling in a stretched lower tail towards the middle and pushing out the upper tail. Okay, so how would this work in practice? The steps in our analysis would be model. We propose a model and estimate the parameters. Residuals. There are various plots and tests out there for checking conditions on the error term. Look at the residual plot for signs of heteroscedasticity and the QQ normal plot for normality. BC transform. OK, if there are signs of problems with the errors, we can try a box Cox transformation on y. For it to work, the values of y must all be greater than 0. Look at the plot of lambda values plotted against the log likelihood, and the 95% confidence interval lambda gives you a guide as to what lambda to try. Refit and look at the residuals. Refit the model with y raised to the chosen lambda or the bc transformed y. It's a matter of preference as both have the same analysis of variance since bc is a linear transformation of y to the power lambda. The first is more popular as it's easy to interpret. Have a look again at the residuals and hopefully it should be better now. Let's look at an example. The left figure is a residual plot from a regression model. In the homogeneity assumption, if the homogeneity assumption is met, the residual should fall in a narrow band. But here they fan out, suggesting the variance of the error term is growing with y, i.e. there may be a heteroscedasticity. The right figure is a normal QQ plot of the residuals. The dots fall away from the line at the end, suggesting the error is not normal. So we try a BC on y. Here is a figure of the log likelihood plotted over lambda. The approximate 95% confidence is for lambda is from around 0.32 to 0.72. The point estimate of lambda is about 0.52. From the power ladder, this suggests a square root transform. Comparing the residual plots before and after the transformation, you see transformed y now looks fine. Likewise, the normal QQ plot looks better after the transformation. BC is applicable when all y's 
are bigger than zero. The fix if you have y's that are zero or negative is to add a positive value called the start to all values of y so that the new y is all positive. By doing this you shift the location of y's up by the same amount. An alternative is to use the Yale and Johnson transform or some other similar transform that does not have the restriction that y's must be positive. Box cocks on x's. This is a common question. The BC works on Y. Box also works on a transform for the X's and it's called a Box Tidwell transform. Packages that do Box Cox. Popular packages that do it are R, Stata, SAS, Minitab. At this time SPSS can't do it on the standard version. It may be available in some add-on package you have to buy or uh, you might want to link SPSS to R. Anyway, it's more work to set up. In SPSS and in Excel, you can run it manually by plotting the RSS over the various values of lambda and picking the power that gives the smallest RSS. Otherwise, download R, which is easy to learn and offers more than SPSS, and it's free. BC doesn't work with my data. BC is one kind of transformation. If BC doesn't work, have another think about your data. If the errors for a model are not normal, it may be highly skewed, there's no guarantee that BC can make it normal. In this case, GLM, the generalized linear models, might be the way to go. Basic GLM class of models is regression for models with Y that belong to the exponential family of distributions. You might have encountered a GLM model other than normal errors without even knowing it. The logistic regression taught in introductory modeling courses is an example of a GLM. Also, the value of lambda will be affected by outliers, so if you have find you need big lambda value outside the range of plus or minus two, look for outliers. Okay guys, we're at the end and I hope this video has been useful. The material for this presentation has been drawn from Box Cox's 1964 paper and the book by Montgomery Peck Binding. This book has a nice balance of theory and applications. I include a link of it in the description box.